Screams of terror shattered the contemplative silence of the Galactic Council Academy's premier xenobiology lecture hall as Professor Indus revealed the deadly nature of Earth's water and oxygen to his horrified alien students. The gray-scaled Tarkalian's webbed hands trembled as he manipulated the console, projecting detailed chemical compositions that promised swift annihilation to the dozens of non-human races represented in the auditorium. It's true, Indus said, his amphibious features taut with disbelief. The human homeworld is a death trap, yet they thrive in it. Gasps and frantic whispers rippled through the audience as the implications sank in. An entire civilization, technologically advanced and now part of the galactic community, had mastered harnessing the very elements that would spell doom for most sentient life. In the midst of the chaos, Gabriel Davis, a human exchange student, sat rigidly in his seat, acutely aware of the hundreds of eyes, compound, reptilian, and crystalline, turning toward him with a volatile mix of fear and accusation. The bronze-skinned young man clenched his fists, bracing for the inevitable backlash as suspicion and ostracization crept through the room like a noxious fog. Suddenly, a piercing alarm ripped through the lecture hall, silencing the panicked chatter. Indus paled as he read the high-priority message that flashed across the main screen. The Taurian Pact, he whispered hoarsely. They're trying to exploit this revelation, to undermine humanity's growing influence. Gabriel's heart pounded as the weight of the situation crashed upon him. The future of human-alien relations hung in the balance, and he found himself at the nexus of a brewing conflict that threatened to tear the fragile fabric of galactic peace asunder. In that moment, he knew that failure was not an option. Humanity's fate depended on his next move. In the wake of Professor Indus's revelations, the Galactic Council Academy descended into chaos. President Xylax, his iridescent green carapace glinting under the harsh lights of the crisis room, slammed a clawed appendage onto the table. Enough, he thundered, silencing the bickering department heads. We must act swiftly to prevent this situation from spiraling out of control. Xylax's compound eyes swept over the gathered officials, assessing each before speaking again. We will assemble a joint task force of our finest alien and human scientists. Their mission, to develop protective gear that will allow safe interaction between our species. He turned to face a tall, slender Arcturian with vibrant blue skin. Dr. Vanya Soltari, you will lead the alien contingent. Your human counterpart will be Dr. Ethan Reeves. Vanya nodded, her angular features set with willpower. We'll need access to the Academy's top research facilities and a team of our most brilliant minds. Whatever you require, Xylax assured her. The stakes could not be higher. As the meeting adjourned, Vanya and Ethan wasted no time in assembling their team and diving into their work. Hour after hour, they toiled in the lab, running simulations and experiments searching for a solution that remained maddeningly out of reach. The vast biological differences between human and alien physiology seemed an insurmountable obstacle. Frustration mounting, Vanya slumped into a chair, her bioluminescent freckles pulsing with agitation. This is impossible, she muttered. We're trying to create a universal protective system for dozens of species with wildly divergent needs. Ethan, his brow furrowed, leaned against a lab bench. What if we're approaching this the wrong way? Instead of a one-size-fits-all solution, what if we tailored individual protective gear for each species? Vanya's eyes widened. It's a radical idea, but it might just work. She stood, renewed energy coursing through her. We'll need to present this to the task force. Get their approval to change course. As the scientists threw themselves into their new approach across campus, Gabriel Davis faced a growing tide of hostility from his alien peers. Whispered slurs dogged his steps, and he felt the weight of accusatory stares wherever he went. One evening, as he studied alone in the library, a group of Torian students led by the sneering Zoltar Kresh cornered him. Well, well, if it isn't the poison breather, Zoltar hissed, his reptilian eyes glinting with malice. You don't belong here, human. Your kind brings nothing but death. Gabriel stood his ground, even as Zoltar shoved him roughly against a bookshelf. I have just as much right to be here as you do, he said, his voice steady despite the pounding of his heart. Zoltar snarled, 
drawing back a clawed fist. But before he could strike, campus security burst into the library, alerted by a silent alarm. They hauled the Tarian students away, leaving Gabriel shaken but resolute. News of the attack spread like wildfire, reaching even the highest echelons of the academy. President Zylax himself visited Gabriel in the medical bay, his usually stern demeanor softened by concern. This kind of behavior will not be tolerated, he said firmly. We must stand united in the face of this crisis, not turn against each other. Zylax's words, broadcast across the galaxy, helped to calm rising tensions, but they also drew the attention of the Torian Pact. High Commander Zarn Kulax, seeing an opportunity to strike a blow against human interests, dispatched covert operatives to the Academy with orders to sabotage the Joint Task Force's work. As Vanya and Ethan made promising strides in their tailored protective gear designs, a series of mysterious accidents and setbacks threatened to derail their progress. Equipment malfunctioned, samples went missing, and data was corrupted. Suspecting foul play, they turned to Gabriel for help in investigating the incidents. Together, the unlikely trio uncovered evidence of Torian involvement, tracing the sabotage back to Zarn Kulax's operatives. They brought their findings to President Zylax, who authorized a secret counteroperation to neutralize the threat. As Gabriel, Vanya, and Ethan worked to outmaneuver the Torian agents, the stakes grew ever higher. The future of human-alien relations hung in the balance, and failure was not an option. With time running out and the enemy closing in, they knew they would have to risk everything to protect the fragile peace they had worked so hard to build. Gabriel's fingers flew across the holographic keyboard, his eyes darting between multiple screens as he sifted through layers of encrypted data. Beside him, Vanya's bioluminescent freckles pulsed with concentration, her slender blue fingers manipulating a complex 3D molecular model. Ethan paced behind them, muttering calculations under his breath. The lab's silence was broken by a soft beep from Gabriel's console. Got something, he said, his voice tight with anticipation. A hidden subroutine in the environmental controls. It's subtle, but... Vanya leaned in, her eyes widening. It's designed to introduce minute fluctuations in temperature and humidity, just enough to throw off our experiments without raising suspicion. Ethan stopped pacing. We need to trace its origin. As they delved deeper into the system, a pattern emerged, a sophisticated network of sabotage extending far beyond their initial suspicions. Gabriel's heart raced as he followed the digital breadcrumbs, each discovery bringing them closer to the truth. A sudden flicker of movement in the shadows caught Vanya's eye. She tensed, tapping Gabriel's shoulder in silent warning. They weren't alone. In one fluid motion, Gabriel activated a hidden subroutine of his own, locking down their workstations and flooding the lab with a dazzling burst of light. A startled yelp echoed through the room as a figure stumbled backward, momentarily blinded. Ethan was on the intruder in an instant, pinning them against the wall. As the light faded, they found themselves face to face with a young Torian, fear evident in his reptilian eyes. Who sent you? Gabriel demanded, stepping forward. The Torian scales rippled with anxiety. But please, he stammered. I had no choice. They threatened my family. Before they could press further, the lab door hissed open. Admiral Zarn strode in, his weathered face set in grim lines. Stand down, he ordered, eyeing the captive Torian. We've got bigger fish to fry. In the Admiral's office, Gabriel, Vanya, and Ethan stood at attention as Zarn paced before them. Your findings confirm our worst fears, he said, his voice gravelly. This goes beyond simple sabotage. We're dealing with a full-scale conspiracy. He gestured to a holographic display, revealing a web of connections linking key figures within the Academy to known Torian operatives. At the center was a face that made Gabriel's blood run cold. Dr. Zolara Vex, Dean of Xenopolitical Studies. We can't move against them openly, Zarn continued. Not yet. We need irrefutable evidence and a strategy to counter their propaganda. A crisp knock interrupted them. The door slid open to reveal Lieutenant Cal Rovic, Zarn's aide. The young officer's eyes gleamed with barely held back excitement. Sir, he said, snapping a salute. We've made contact with Selena Traxus. She's agreed to meet. Zarn nodded. Good. 
We'll need her insights if we're going to outmaneuver the Torians. As they filed out of the office, Gabriel felt a mix of grit and trepidation. They were no longer just students caught in the crossfire. They were now at the heart of a covert operation with galactic implications. The team made their way through the Academy's winding corridors, senses on high alert for any sign of surveillance or pursuit. As they neared the rendezvous point, a distant explosion rocked the building, sending tremors through the floor. Panic erupted around them as students and faculty poured into the hallways. Through the chaos, Gabriel caught a glimpse of a familiar face, Zoltar Kresh, the Torian who had attacked him in the library. Their eyes met for a brief moment, and Gabriel saw something unexpected in Zoltar's gaze. Not hatred, but fear. Before Gabriel could process the implications, Vanya grabbed his arm, pulling him forward. We can't stop now, she urged. Everything depends on this meeting. They pressed on, leaving the growing tumult behind them. As they approached a nondescript door at the end of a seldom-used corridor, Gabriel steeled himself for what lay ahead. Whatever revelations awaited them, he knew their actions in the coming hours would shape the future of human-alien relations for generations to come. To come. As Gabriel reached for the door handle, a powerful tremor shook the building, knocking them off balance. Alarms blared, and emergency lights bathed the corridor in an eerie red glow. What now? Ethan muttered, steadying himself against the wall. Before anyone could respond, the door swung open, revealing a statuesque figure with iridescent, feather-like scales. High matriarch Cora Neris of the Pliarian Confederacy stood before them, her luminous eyes scanning the group. We must move quickly, she said, her melodic voice tinged with urgency. The Taurians have made their move. As they hurried through the corridors, Cora briefed them on the situation. Admiral Zarn has called an emergency meeting of galactic leaders. We've uncovered evidence of a far-reaching conspiracy within the Academy. Gabriel's mind raced. Dean Vex, he breathed, the pieces falling into place. Cora nodded grimly. Among others, your friend Lieutenant Cal is already in place, gathering intel from Vex's inner circle. They entered a secure command center where Admiral Zarn stood before a holographic display, his face etched with concern. As Gabriel and his companions joined the assembled leaders, Zarn began outlining their plan to expose the conspirators. Suddenly, warning klaxons erupted throughout the facility. A technician's panicked voice cut through the chaos. Sir, the Biosphere Dome, it's been breached. Zarn's eyes widened in horror. Evacuate immediately. Lock down all affected sectors. As they rushed to implement containment protocols, Gabriel felt a wave of dizziness wash over him. He stumbled, his vision blurring. Vanya caught him, her cool hands steadying his feverish skin. Gabriel? Her voice sounded distant, muffled. Gabriel, can you hear me? He tried to respond, but his lungs felt like they were filled with molten lead. As darkness crept into the edges of his vision, Gabriel saw Ethan's face, contorted with worry. It's the bioweapon, Ethan said, his words barely registering in Gabriel's fading consciousness. We need to get him to the lab, now. Gabriel's world dissolved into a haze of pain and disjointed sensations. He was vaguely aware of being moved, of voices arguing in the background. Through the fog, he caught snippets of conversation. Tailored to human physiology, sabotaged equipment, running out of time. He drifted in and out of awareness, each moment of lucidity bringing new waves of agony. In his delirium, Gabriel saw flashes of the chaos unfolding around him. Vanya and Ethan working feverishly at their stations, alarms blaring as security forces clashed with Torian infiltrators. Dean Vex's face twisted in rage as she was led away in restraints. Time lost all meaning. Gabriel floated in a sea of darkness, tethered to life by the faintest thread. And then, like a distant beacon, he heard Vanya's voice. I think I've got it. Ethan, look at this. A cool sensation spread through his veins pushing back the fire that had consumed him. Gabriel's eyes fluttered open, his vision slowly coming into focus. He found himself in the medical bay, surrounded by anxious faces. Vanya's luminous eyes brimmed with tears of relief. Welcome back, she whispered, squeezing his hand. As Gabriel struggled to sit up, Admiral Zarn approached his bedside, accompanied by High Matriarch Cora 
and a cluster of alien dignitaries. You've been through quite an ordeal, son, Zarn said, his gruff voice softened by genuine concern. But your survival may have just changed the course of history. Cora stepped forward, her feathered scales shimmering. The Tarian plot has been exposed, thanks in no small part to your team's efforts. Your resilience in the face of their bioweapon has become a powerful symbol of human potential. Gabriel's mind reeled, trying to process the implications. As he opened his mouth to speak, a commotion at the door drew everyone's attention. Lieutenant Cal burst into the room, his uniform disheveled and his eyes wild with urgency. Sir, he panted, addressing Admiral Zarn. We've intercepted a transmission. The Torians, they're not done. There's another attack coming, and it's going to make the bioweapon look like child's play. The room erupted into a flurry of activity as leaders conferred and security protocols were enacted. Gabriel locked eyes with Vanya and Ethan, a silent understanding passing between them. Their work was far from finished. As alarms began to sound once more, Gabriel swung his legs over the side of the bed, fighting against the lingering weakness in his limbs. Whatever challenges lay ahead, he knew that the fate of human-alien relations still hung in the balance, and he was determined to see it through. Through. Gabriel gritted his teeth and pushed himself to his feet, ignoring the protests of his aching body. The room spun for a moment, but he steadied himself against the bed frame. What's the situation? he asked, his voice hoarse. Admiral Zarn's response was cut short by a deafening explosion that rocked the medical bay. Alarms blared as emergency lights bathed the room in an eerie red glow. We're under attack, Lieutenant Cal shouted over the din. Torian strike team breached the outer defenses. Gabriel's heart raced as he realized the implications. Vanya and Ethan, he gasped. They're in the xenobiology labs. Without waiting for orders, Gabriel staggered toward the door. Admiral Zarn caught his arm. You're in no condition to... With all due respect, sir, Gabriel interrupted. I know those labs better than anyone. I have to help. Zarn hesitated, then nodded grimly. Cal, get him a sidearm and escort him to the labs. I'll coordinate our defenses from here. As they raced through the corridors, the sounds of battle echoed around them. Plasma bolts sizzled past, leaving scorch marks on the walls. Gabriel's muscles screamed in protest, but adrenaline pushed him forward. They rounded a corner and came face to face with a group of Torian operatives. Time seemed to slow as Gabriel took in the scene. The aliens' scales gleamed under the emergency lighting, their reptilian eyes cold and focused. In their grasp were several hostages, including Vanya and Ethan. No! Gabriel shouted, raising his weapon. Cal pulled him back as a barrage of plasma fire erupted from the Torians. They dove behind a nearby barrier, the acrid smell of ozone filling the air. We need backup, Cal yelled into his comm unit. Xenobiology labs, Sector 7. Gabriel's mind raced, searching for a solution. He knew every inch of these labs, every service tunnel and maintenance shaft. There had to be a way to outmaneuver the Torians. Lieutenant, he said, an idea forming. There's a secondary access point through the ventilation system. If we can get a small team in there, we might be able to flank them. Cal nodded, relaying the information to the incoming reinforcements. As they waited for backup to arrive, Gabriel's thoughts turned to Vanya and Ethan. He could still see the fear in their eyes as the Torians dragged them away. He silently vowed to get them back, no matter the consequences. The firefight intensified as human marines joined the fray. Gabriel led a small team through the narrow ventilation shafts, his body protesting every movement. They emerged behind the Torian position, catching them off guard. In the chaos that followed, Gabriel spotted Vanya and Ethan huddled with the other hostages. He locked eyes with Vanya, seeing a mix of relief and dedication in her luminous gaze. With a subtle nod, she understood his unspoken plan. As Gabriel and the Marines provided covering fire, Vanya sprang into action. She elbowed her Torian captor in the abdomen, using her slight frame to slip from his grasp. Ethan followed suit, tackling another operative. The lab erupted into close-quarters combat. Gabriel found himself grappling with a Torian twice his size, the alien scales rough against his skin. He could hear the shouts and screams of both humans and aliens around him. 
punctuated by the hiss of plasma weapons. A searing pain exploded in Gabriel's side as a stray bolt grazed him. He stumbled, giving the Tori in the upper hand. As the alien raised its weapon for a killing blow, a blur of blue intercepted it. Vanya, her bioluminescent freckles pulsing with exertion, had thrown herself into the fray. Together they managed to subdue the Taurian. Gabriel looked up to see the tide of battle turning. The human forces, bolstered by the arrival of High Matriarch Korra's joint security team, were pushing the Taurians back. Commander Kulax's voice boomed over the facility's comm system, issuing his ultimatum. But it was too late. The combined forces of the Academy had already secured the hostages and cornered the remaining Torian operatives. As the last of the invaders were subdued, Gabriel slumped against a nearby console, exhaustion finally overtaking him. Vanya knelt beside him, her cool hands examining his wound. You shouldn't have come, she chided softly, but her eyes shone with gratitude. Gabriel managed a weak smile. Couldn't let you have all the fun. Ethan joined them, his lab coat torn and stained. We need to get him to medical, he said, concern etched on his face. As they helped Gabriel to his feet, Admiral Zarn entered the lab, surveying the aftermath of the battle. His eyes met Gabriel's, a mixture of pride and sorrow in his gaze. Well done, son, Zarn said gruffly, but I'm afraid this is just the beginning. Gabriel nodded, understanding the weight of those words. As they made their way out of the ravaged lab, he knew that the path ahead would be fraught with challenges. But looking at Vanya and Ethan, seeing the perseverance in their eyes, he felt a glimmer of hope. Together, they would face whatever came next. Gabriel's recovery was cut short by the sudden eruption of retaliatory strikes against human outposts across the galaxy. The Academy's victory against the Torian abduction attempt had ignited a powder keg of hostilities, plunging the already fragile diplomatic situation into crisis. As reports flooded in of devastated colonies and besieged space stations, Gabriel found himself thrust into the center of a diplomatic maelstrom. Selena Traxxas, the Xylothian diplomat renowned for her keen political acumen, had orchestrated an emergency summit on Andaria Prime. Gabriel, still bearing the physical and mental scars of his ordeal, was tapped to represent the student body's perspective in the human delegation. The journey to Andaria was tense the ship's corridors buzzing with anxious whispers and furtive glances. Gabriel spent the time poring over briefing documents, his mind racing with the enormity of the task ahead. As they disembarked on Andaria's pristine spaceport, Gabriel was struck by the stark contrast between the planet's serene beauty and the palpable tension in the air. Delegates from across the galaxy converged, their faces etched with worry and grit. The summit chamber was a marvel of alien architecture, its soaring crystalline dome refracting the light of Andaria's twin suns. Gabriel took his seat, acutely aware of the weight of responsibility on his shoulders. The proceedings began with a thunderous declaration from High Commander Varand, the Torian representative. His scales filled with aggression, Varand's voice boomed through the chamber. The human worlds will pay for their transgressions. We demand immediate concessions and reparations for the insult to Torian honor. Murmurs rippled through the assembly. Gabriel's fists clenched beneath the table, his face hardened in almost unchecked anger. But before he could respond, Admiral Zarn rose, his weathered face betraying no emotion. Esteemed delegates, Zarn began, his voice steady, I present to you irrefutable evidence of Torian conspiracy and sabotage at our academy. With a gesture, he activated a holographic display. Gasps and exclamations filled the air as incriminating documents, surveillance footage, and intercepted communications flickered before the stunned audience. Varun's face contorted in rage. Lies! Human fabrications! But the evidence was damning. As the truth spread through the extranet, Gabriel watched the tide of public opinion shift. The Torian delegation, their bluff called, stormed out of the summit in a show of impotent defiance. Selena Traxxas seized the moment, her voice, calm yet commanding, cut through the chaos. I propose an emergency resolution to grant provisional allied protection over human territories as we continue negotiations. The vote that followed was nail-bitingly close. Gabriel, sensing the pivotal nature of the moment, stepped forward to address the assembly, 
His voice, hoarse with emotion, carried the weight of humanity's struggles and hopes. As the final tally was announced, a ripple of relief washed through the human delegation. The resolution had passed, but Gabriel knew the real challenges were just beginning. No sooner had they returned to the academy than alarms blared throughout the station. Tari and Hunter killer teams had launched a brazen assault, their target clear, Vanya, Ethan, and their groundbreaking protective gear program. Gabriel raced through the chaos-filled corridors, his heart pounding. He reached the research lab just as a Torian disruptor cannon obliterated the reinforced door. Through the smoke and debris, he saw Ethan crumple to the ground, a gaping wound in his chest. Vanya's face was a mask of purpose as she dragged Ethan's unconscious form to a nearby stasis pod. Her fingers flew over the controls, initiating a procedure Gabriel had only heard whispered about in theoretical discussions. What are you doing? He shouted over the din of battle. Vanya's eyes met his, a mix of fear and drive in their depths, saving his life. The stasis pod hummed to life, bathing Ethan in an eerie blue glow. As Gabriel watched in awe, tendrils of bio-organic material began to weave themselves into Ethan's flesh, merging man and machine in a way never before attempted. The minutes stretched like hours as the integration process continued. Outside, the sounds of combat grew closer. Gabriel gripped his weapon tightly, prepared to defend his friends to his last breath. Suddenly, the pod hissed open. Ethan emerged, his body now a seamless fusion of human tissue and advanced alien technology. His eyes snapped open, glowing with an otherworldly light. We need to move, Ethan said, his voice tinged with a metallic resonance. I can sense the Torian's positions. As they fought their way out of the lab, Gabriel marveled at Ethan's newfound abilities. The human engineer moved with inhuman speed and precision, his integrated shields deflecting enemy fire with ease. Word of Ethan's transformation spread rapidly, becoming a rallying cry for those who sought unity in the face of Torian aggression. Gabriel knew that this breakthrough, born of desperation and ingenuity, could be the key to turning the tide of the conflict. As they regrouped in a secure bunker, planning their next move, Gabriel looked at his friends, Vanya, her bioluminescent freckles pulsing with perseverance, and Ethan, a living symbol of human adaptability. Despite the challenges that lay ahead, he felt a surge of hope. The Torians had escalated the conflict to new heights, but humanity and its allies were rising to meet the challenge. The path forward was fraught with danger, yet Gabriel knew that every small victory brought them one step closer to a future of galactic cooperation. Gabriel's comm unit chimed with an urgent priority message. Admiral Zarn's face appeared, his expression grave. Operation Xenobridge is a go, Zarn said without preamble. You're our liaison, Gabriel. Make it happen. The Admiral's words hung in the air as Gabriel processed their implications. Ethan's successful integration had opened a Pandora's box of possibilities and dangers. Understood, sir, Gabriel replied, his mind already racing with the logistics of coordinating such a massive undertaking. As Gabriel immersed himself in the intricate details of Xenobridge, coordinating the pairing of human and alien partners for bioshield integration, a distress call cut through the controlled chaos of the command center. This is Lieutenant Cal Rovick. We're under heavy fire. The transmission crackled with static and the sound of plasma bolts. Tarian ambush, half the team down, requesting immediate evac. Gabriel's blood ran cold. He knew Cal had been leading a critical extraction mission, but the security protocols had kept him in the dark about the details. Without hesitation, Gabriel grabbed Vanya's arm. We're going after them. That's against protocol, Vanya protested, but her eyes already gleamed with commitment. They sprinted to the hangar bay, commandeering a personnel shuttle. Gabriel's fingers flew over the controls, overriding security lockdowns. You sure about this? Vanya asked as the shuttle's engines roared to life. Gabriel's expression resolute. No, but we're doing it anyway. The shuttle shot out of the bay, streaking towards the coordinates of Cal's distress signal. As they approached the planet, the scope of the Torian blockade became apparent. Hold on, Gabriel warned, gripping the controls tightly. He sent the shuttle into a steep dive, skirting the edge of the planet's atmosphere. The hull glowed red-hot as they plummeted through the sky, 
Taurian fire streaking past them. They emerged from the clouds to find a hellscape below. Cal's surviving squad members were entrenched in the smoking ruins of a research facility, surrounded by advancing Torian forces. Gabriel brought the shuttle in low, strafing the Torian line with covering fire. Vanya manned the rear hatch, providing suppressing fire as they touched down amidst the chaos. About time you showed up, Cal shouted over the din of battle, his face streaked with blood and grime. Gabriel and Vanya joined the fray, their weapons finding Torian targets with practiced efficiency. But for every enemy that fell, two more seemed to take its place. A piercing scream cut through the firefight. Gabriel turned to see a young alien scientist crumpled to the ground, a plasma bolt having pierced her protective gear. Vanya rushed to her side, hands already working to stem the flow of silvery blood. She's not going to make it, Vanya said, her voice tight with frustration. Gabriel's mind raced, recalling the desperate measures they'd taken with Ethan. The bioshield, he said. We can use it to save her. Vanya's eyes widened in understanding. It's never been tested on her species, she warned. We don't have a choice, Gabriel replied, already prepping the integration equipment they'd brought along. As the battle raged around them, Vanya worked feverishly to adapt the bioshield to the alien's unique physiology. The scientist, Lyra, Gabriel learned, writhed in agony as the symbiotic material bonded with her flesh. Suddenly, Lyra's eyes snapped open, glowing with an otherworldly light. She rose, her body now encased in a shimmering exosuit that pulsed with energy. We need to move, Lyra said, her voice resonating with newfound strength. With Lyra's unexpected assist, they managed to fight their way back to the shuttle, but their reprieve was short-lived. Tarian ships descended from the sky, cutting off their escape route. The engines are hit, Cal growled, pounding the shuttle's controls in frustration. Gabriel's eyes scanned the desolate landscape, settling on a dilapidated structure in the distance. There, he pointed, that old outpost might have a way out. They abandoned the crippled shuttle, making a desperate dash for the outpost under heavy fire. Inside, they barricaded the entrances, buying precious moments to catch their breath and assess their options. Cal's eyes lit up as he uncovered a dust-covered console. It's an old human teleportation system, he explained, his fingers already working to bring it online. Is it safe? Vanya asked, eyeing the ancient technology skeptically. Cal shook his head. Not even close, but it's our only shot. As the Torian forces began to breach their defenses, Cal activated the teleporter. Energy crackled around them, the air itself seeming to twist and tear. In a blinding flash, Gabriel felt himself being torn apart and reassembled. When his vision cleared, he found himself on the bridge of a massive starship. Selena Traxxas stood before him, her face a mask of shock and concern. Before Gabriel could process their impossible salvation, alarms blared throughout the ship. The teleportation had triggered a catastrophic systems failure. Torian ships incoming! A crewman shouted as the first salvo of enemy fire rocked the vessel. In the chaos that followed, Gabriel lost track of his companions. He felt himself being shoved into an escape pod. The last thing he saw before the hatch sealed was Traxxas's flagship breaking apart under the Torian assault. The pod jettisoned into the void of space, tumbling end over end. As the adrenaline began to fade, Gabriel realized he had no idea where he was or if any of his friends had survived. He was alone, adrift in the vast emptiness between stars, with only his wits and the faint hope of rescue to sustain him. Gabriel's eyes snapped open, his heart racing as he took in the cramped confines of the escape pod. The events of the past hours crashed over him in a disorienting wave. The desperate fight, the teleportation malfunction, Traxxas's flagship breaking apart. He fumbled for the pod's controls, activating the distress beacon. As the signal pulsed out into the void, Gabriel scanned the emergency readouts. His stomach tightened. Life support was failing rapidly. A crackle of static burst from the comm unit. Anyone? There? This is Lyra, running low on oxygen. Gabriel's fingers flew over the console. Lyra, I'm here. Are you injured? Negative, she replied her voice tinged with the metallic resonance of her biosuit. 
but I don't know how much longer this pod will hold out. Similar messages filtered in from other survivors, Vanya, Cal, and a handful of others. They were alive but scattered and rapidly running out of time. As the hours ticked by, Gabriel felt the icy tendrils of despair creeping in. The vast emptiness of space seemed to mock their feeble distress calls. Suddenly, the pod's sensors lit up. A massive ship was approaching at high speed. Unidentified vessel, a gruff voice boomed over the comm. This is Captain Rordak of the Hellraiser. Prepare for retrieval. Relief washed over Gabriel as a tractor beam locked onto his pod. Through the viewport, he saw other pods being pulled in as well. The Hellraiser's docking bay was a patchwork of mismatched panels and jury rig systems. As Gabriel stumbled out of his pod, he came face to face with their unlikely savior. Captain Rordak towered over him, easily eight feet tall. The Krillothane's exoskeleton was a mottled green, scarred and pitted from countless battles. Four arms, each ending in wickedly sharp claws, crossed over his armored chest. You're lucky I was in the sector, Rordak growled, mandibles clicking. Now what the hell are you doing out here? As the other survivors gathered, Gabriel recounted their harrowing escape from the Torian ambush. Rordak's compound eyes narrowed at the mention of the Torians. Those bastards, he spat. They took everything from me. My mate, my brood. His claws clenched into fists. Gabriel exchanged glances with Lyra and Vanya. The tension in the air was palpable. Rordak's mandibles twitched in what might have been a grim smile. As it happens, I could use some help. There's a Torian research outpost I've been tracking. Word is they're cooking up some nasty bioweapon. What are you proposing? Cal asked, his voice wary. A raid, Rordak said. We hit the outpost, steal their data. Use it as a deterrent against further Torian attacks. Gabriel's mind raced. The idea of using a bioweapon, even as a threat, went against everything he believed in. But with the conflict spiraling out of control, what choice did they have? I can help with containment protocols, Lyra offered, her bio suit pulsing with energy. Rordak nodded approvingly. Good. You'll need it where we're going. As the Hellraiser's engines roared to life, propelling them towards the uncharted sectors where the Torian outposts lay hidden, Gabriel felt the weight of their decision settling on his shoulders. Rordak led them to a makeshift training area. We've got three days to turn you lot into a passable infiltration team, he growled. Let's get started. The next 72 hours were a blur of grueling exercises, tactical simulations, and crash courses in Torian security systems. Gabriel's muscles screamed in protest, but he pushed through the pain. As they neared their target, Rordak gathered them for a final briefing. A holographic display flickered to life, showing the layout of the Torian outpost. Our primary objective is the central data core, Rordak explained, highlighting a heavily fortified section. We get in, download the bioweapon data, and get out. Fast and clean. Gabriel studied the schematics, his mind already mapping out potential routes and choke points. What about security? Rordak's mandibles clicked. Heavy, but I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. As the Hellraiser dropped out of FTL, the imposing bulk of the Torian outpost loomed before them. Gabriel took a deep breath, steeling himself for what was to come. Rordak's voice crackled over the comm. Showtime, people. Let's make these Taurian bastards regret the day they crossed us. With a hiss of depressurization, the Hellraiser's airlock opened. Gabriel and his team launched themselves into the inky void, propulsion packs guiding them towards the outpost's outer hull. As they approached their entry point, Gabriel's heart pounded in his ears. He knew that beyond these walls lay not just the key to ending the war, but also the potential for unimaginable destruction. The airlock cycled open, and they slipped inside. The real test was about to begin. Begin. The outpost's sterile corridors echoed with the sound of their footsteps as Gabriel led the team deeper into enemy territory. Rordak's massive form took point, his forearms cradling an array of weaponry. Security hub ahead, Cal whispered, consulting a holographic map. We'll need to neutralize it to reach the data core. Gabriel nodded, signaling for the team to take position. With practiced efficiency, they breached the hub, 
catching the Torian guards off guard. In the ensuing firefight, Gabriel's reflexes were pushed to their limit, dodging plasma bolts and returning fire with deadly precision. As the last guard fell, Lyra rushed to the main console, her biosuit interfacing with the alien technology. I'm in, she announced, her voice tinged with excitement. Disabling security protocols now. Alarms blared throughout the facility. So much for stealth, Vanya muttered, readying her weapon. They fought their way through waves of Torian reinforcements, the air thick with ozone and the acrid smell of burning circuitry. Gabriel's muscles burned with exertion, but adrenaline kept him moving forward. Finally, they reached the data core, a massive crystalline structure pulsing with energy. Lyra immediately set to work, her fingers flying over holographic interfaces as she extracted the bioweapon data. We've got company, Rordak roared, his bulk filling the doorway as he unleashed a barrage of fire into the corridor. Gabriel's heart raced as he saw the sheer number of Taurian forces converging on their position. Lyra, how much longer? Almost there, she replied, her voice strained with concentration. Suddenly, a deafening explosion rocked the facility. Rordak staggered back, his exoskeleton smoking from a direct hit. Go, he bellowed, tossing Gabriel a data chip. I'll hold them off. Before Gabriel could protest, Rordak charged into the corridor, his battle cry drowning out the sounds of combat. With a heavy heart, Gabriel led the team towards their extraction point, Rordak's sacrifice buying them precious seconds. They barely made it to the Hellraiser the ship's engines roaring to life as they cleared the outpost hangar. But their momentary relief was short-lived. A fleet of Taurian warships dropped out of FTL, their weapons trained on the fleeing freighter. Incoming transmission, Cal announced, his face grim. It's Admiral Zarn. The holographic display flickered to life, revealing the stern visage of the human fleet commander. Lieutenant Rovik, I've dispatched a stealth frigate to your coordinates. Rendezvous and transfer the bioweapon data immediately. As Cal acknowledged the order, the Hellraiser shuddered under enemy fire. Warning lights flashed across the cockpit as systems began to fail. We're not going to make it, Vanya shouted over the din of alarms. Gabriel's mind raced, weighing their dwindling options. His gaze fell on the nearby moon of Caloran 5, its pockmarked surface offering a slim chance of survival. Cal, prep an escape pod he ordered, securing the data chip. We're going to have to split up. As Tarian boarders began to breach the Hellraiser's hull, Gabriel made his decision. He loaded the bioweapon data into the pod's computer and launched it towards the lunar surface. What are you doing? Lyra demanded, her biosuit pulsing with agitation. Gabriel's fingers flew over the ship's console, inputting a series of commands. Buying us time, he replied grimly and making sure this ship doesn't fall into Torian hands. The self-destruct sequence initiated, its countdown echoing through the corridors. As Cal's marines engaged the Torian borders in vicious close-quarters combat, Gabriel herded the remaining team members towards the escape pods. Vanya, take the scientists and head for the old mining tunnels, he instructed, passing her a battered data pad. We'll draw their fire and rendezvous when we can. Vanya hesitated for a moment, then nodded, her eyes filled with dedication. As the pods jettisoned into space, the Hellraiser erupted in a brilliant explosion, temporarily blinding their Torian pursuers. Gabriel's pods streaked through Kalaran 5's thin atmosphere, the heat of re-entry causing the metal to groan in protest. They hit the lunar surface hard, the impact rattling his teeth and sending shockwaves of pain through his body. As Gabriel stumbled from the wreckage, he saw Taurian ships descending through the atmosphere. Orbital bombardment began to rain down, massive explosions sending plumes of dust and debris into the sky. Move, he shouted to Lara and Cal, who had managed to extract themselves from their own pods. We need to put some distance between us and this position. They set off across the barren lunar landscape, their protective gear barely shielding them from the harsh environment. Gabriel's mind raced, formulating plans and discarding them just as quickly. The weight of the bioweapon data chip seemed to burn in his pocket, a constant reminder of the stakes they faced. As they crested a ridge, Gabriel caught sight of Vanya's group in the distance, making their way towards the abandoned mines. 
He allowed himself a moment of relief before focusing on the task at hand, drawing the Taurian forces away from their companions. Little did he know that within those very minds lurked a threat perhaps even greater than the pursuing Taurians, a fanatical sect that would soon plunge them all into a desperate struggle for survival. Gabriel's lungs burned as he led Lyra and Cal through the twisting lunar canyons. The distant rumble of Taurian bombers grew closer with each passing moment. There! Cal shouted, pointing to a yawning cave entrance. They ducked inside just as a series of explosions rocked the surface behind them. Dust and debris rained down, momentarily obscuring their vision. As the air cleared, Gabriel's eyes widened in shock. The abandoned mine wasn't abandoned at all. Crude structures and makeshift labs filled the cavernous space. At the center stood Commander Kravox, his eyes gleaming with fanatical intensity. Surrounding him were Vanya and the other scientists, strapped to gurneys and hooked up to ominous-looking machinery. Ah, our guests have arrived, Kravox sneered, just in time to witness the birth of a new era. With a flourish, he activated a central console. A pulsing blue anomaly sprang to life, rapidly expanding outward. The virus's terraforming cycle has begun, Kravox proclaimed. Soon all matter will be reduced to its most basic form ready to be reshaped in my image. Gabriel's mind raced. He caught Lyra's eye, a silent plan forming between them. As they inched closer to the environmental controls, chaos erupted. Vanya, through sheer force of will, had worked one arm free. She grabbed a nearby scalpel and slashed at her restraints. The other scientists followed suit, grappling with their Torian captors. In the ensuing melee, Gabriel and Lyra sprang into action. They reached the control panel, fingers flying over alien interfaces. Warning klaxons blared as the facility's atmospheric integrity failed. The virus, exposed to the vacuum of space, began to disperse. But Kravox wasn't finished. With a maniacal laugh, he plunged a syringe into his own neck. You've merely delayed the inevitable, he growled, his form already beginning to twist and bulge. I am the virus now. I am the future. Horror gripped Gabriel as he watched Kravox's body balloon grotesquely. Tendrils of corrupted flesh lashed out, seeking new hosts to assimilate. We need to stop him, Lara shouted over the din. But how? Gabriel felt the weight of the bioweapon data chip in his pocket. He knew what he had to do, even if it meant losing his humanity in the process. Lara, he said, his voice tight. Your suit. Can you overload its fusion reactor? Her eyes widened in understanding. Yes, but the antimatter reaction would... Do it, Gabriel commanded. He turned to Vanya, who had fought her way to their side. Get everyone out. Now. As Vanya herded the scientists toward the exit, Lyra began the overload sequence. Gabriel steeled himself for what came next. Whatever happens, he told Lyra, remember why we fought. The reactor reached critical mass. Gabriel threw himself between his friends in the explosion, feeling his mutated cells ignite with agonizing energy. In that moment of blinding light and searing pain, Gabriel Rovic ceased to exist as he once was, but his sacrifice would echo through the cosmos for generations to come. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.